Greetings shippers, welcome back. When it comes to Dream Daddy, we've had quite the journey. Yes, those were finger guns. I've been playing for too long. For those who missed it or were unaware, we've been doing a Dream Daddy playthrough. And not just any playthrough, a playthrough with a purpose. This purpose, a shippable review. Just a general overview of the fandom, the ships they're in, and of course, a bit of a review of the game itself. So if you missed that gameplay and you're interested, then of course, you know the drill click the card or the link will be down below. Just what pairings can one expect when diving into this fandom? And what is the overall tone? If you're interested in finding out, stay tuned. And of course, just to be on the safe side, because we're gonna cover a wide range of topics, spoilers. Quickly, before we get started, yes, this is the Salt Squad shirt. The very same Salt Squad shirt that was spawned from the Dream Daddy stream. There were some salty moments in that stream, it was... It was wonderful. So if you're a bona fide member of the squad, for whatever reason, you can be salty about a great variety of things and wanna rep a shirt, well then the link will be down below. Welcome to the squad. Follow on social media if you haven't already to keep up to date with what's coming up next and just some general fandom chit chat. It's a good time, I swear. And now, let's get started. Dream Daddy was released on July 20th of 2017, though with how rapidly things move in gaming and media, it feels like a lot longer. The game was developed and published by Game Grumps. Yes, those Game Grumps. And was written by Vernon Shaw and Leighton Gray, with the voice acting done by cast members from Game Grumps. And despite officially getting mixed reviews, the game was quite well received by its intended audience, and it was even nominated for Best Visual Novel in PC Gamer's 2017 Game of the Year Awards. Fans were quick to take the game's character designs, overall tone, knowledge of memes and millennial culture, as well as providing humor with some more in-depth character development, to heart. They also appreciated it for never taking itself too too seriously. It provided what it promised, dads dating dads, and streamers were quick to appreciate some of the more stream conscious features. Now that is not to say that the game was messageless or had no purpose, but that that point was balanced with its more fun aspects. The game was quick to develop a solid fan community on all fronts, from theorists to artists to authors to coders, and more many fell in love with the game. Which is not to say it is perfect, and while some find the gaps it leaves to be rife for exploration, for others, they are a bit more egregious. The game's more overall lighthearted tone means that at times it can be a bit hard for some to connect to the more serious moments, and indeed, some feel that moments that should have been given more weight weren't, and vice versa. While others note that depending upon how one plays the game, there are certain continuity issues that can arise, which can take one out of the game somewhat. And if one is not abreast of or fond of what some have dubbed tumblr style pop culture references the game could be seen as grating however the developers have always striven to promote a positive fan environment for everyone and have encouraged transformative fans and have happily shared their game making thought processes and inspirations something that does not always occur, so goes over well when it does. And even though the peak of this game's popularity has passed, it has earned a spot amongst the annals of must-play dating sims. And though not as active, it does still have an engaged fan base, eagerly awaiting any and all potential updates, or new games from the developers. So with all that said, what is the fandom like? Well, aside from one or two noteworthy incidents of toxicity, and the usual small skirmishes, it is a very welcoming and creative fandom with a lot going on. This fandom creates a lot of art, though some has sadly been deemed off limits, something we'll touch on in a future video. On top of art for the various characters and different scenarios they could get into, as well as ships, there are also a decent amount of dad Sona pieces out there, for the game provides a decent level of customization for your daddy, which allows for at the very least a memorable character, and many players grew attached to their creation, Hence, there is not only art, but an ample amount of dad Sona fiction, not to mention fan mixes and other materials. Now who your favorite dad was, if any, will vary depending upon routes taken, or not taken, as depending upon the arc, your dad Sona can have some very different personality traits. It also depends on what cliches slash tropes you enjoy or do not enjoy, as the game has many to choose from. However, despite this, there are some dads who have risen to the top as pairing choices, to be further explored by the dad Sona. These also happen to be choices where there was more left open-ended within the plots, or at least that seems to be the predominant feeling among many fans. In order of popularity, it appears to start with dad Sona and Robert, which is not very surprising, as Robert's route only allows for a burgeoning relationship, or an abruptly cut off one depending upon the player's choices. 
so there is much left to explore, and many wanted to dive more into Robert's softer, fun-loving side. Now, of course, Robert is not for everyone, but he does have a decent fan following, and for many is a fan favorite. With his tragic backstory, disconnected relationship with his daughter, and intriguing connection to other characters, fans felt there was a lot there to explore, and of course, the promise of potential for your dad Sona. Next, we have dad Sona and Craig. Craig himself has been the topic of much first in many a playthrough, and in the case of ours, also some salt. He even managed to work his way into a crossover pairing that ended up spawning the Think About It shirt on this channel. And he is also the dad that allows the player to, well, play out the friends to lovers trope. For fans of this type of story, and Craig in general, it is clear why some would want to continue this story, and hopefully see Craig put less pressure on himself. Now, of course, some find this trope, and Craig himself, to be a bit boring, and are perhaps a bit tired of friends to lovers. So, of course, there are other dads. Next for the dad Sona is Joseph. Now, Joseph is a bit of a polarizing character, and many have a love him or hate him reaction. And here, it must be acknowledged that especially around the game's peak, there was a bit of a fandom hierarchy surrounding which characters one liked, with some attempting to ascribe negative characteristics to those who enjoyed characters that they didn't. This was both fueled and calmed by statements made by game creators. As post the game's burst in popularity, people were quick to ask the creators about their opinions, thought processes, and fan theories, namely around the question as to why it was not achievable to end up with him properly. To which Leighton Gray and Vernon Shaw had this to say, It shouldn't necessarily be about woohooing everybody, this being Shaw referring to the gamer's desire to be able to get with every single character. Saying exactly what somebody wants to hear until they kiss you is what a sociopath does. The goal was to get people to analyze why they'd villainize her, Mary, when in reality, if you're dating Joseph, you're not exactly doing so hot yourself, and how her potentially cheating justifies you doing things with Joseph. I'm surprised, because I thought the discourse around this path would be like, this feels morally dubious and bad, because you're essentially trying to break up a marriage. I'm surprised that so many people have been like, why can't we be together? This was because Mary was created to try to get the player to question why they villainized her, and to question the morality of dating sims. Indeed, much of Dream Daddy's good and bad ending structure was designed in order to subvert player expectations. It was an attempt to subtly remove the player's ability to achieve their fantasies, in lieu of putting them on equal footing with the characters. In essence, making the characters more distinct, and hence in a way, some would argue, more real. A question that some do feel needs to be asked, as some feel that dating sims occupy this nebulous space that needs to be explored, and that gamers should not be able to enter what some have deemed god mode, wherein they can play out all of their fantasies with the characters, as some find this to be problematic. However, the fandom reaction to Joseph is not that surprising for a great many reasons. First and foremost, most people playing dating sims are well aware of the potentially problematic undertones, but are not concerned as they are playing it for a more escapist reason, namely for fun, or as an outlet, and can laugh at the outlandishness of the scenarios without applying them to real life. Also, many enjoy being able to play out their fantasies, but can separate them from real life, acknowledging that of course, in a real world scenario, this would be inappropriate, but if they wanted to not be able to achieve the relationships that they wanted, they could just turn off the game and live real life. In short, one can acknowledge that the dad Sona is questionable for wanting to be with Joseph, but at the end of the day, acknowledge that it is a game, and that a lot of people enjoy being able to control a character to get the outcome they want, realistic or not. So while some may have noted the game's intent, and acknowledged it, and appreciated it, some simply either didn't care, or were curious as to what exactly the ultimate goal was. Was it to get people to make different types of dating sims? or to not pursue dubious choices within said games. However, some appreciate this attempt at subversion, and feel that it is part of the fun as well, not necessarily a detraction, or even a condemnation of dating sims or the genre, but simply a not always asked question, and an intriguing one at that, that makes the game stand out, as some feel that making dating sims subversive is simply the trend of the moment. Ultimately, it didn't end up mattering, because whether people took the developer's intent or not, most enjoyed the game regardless. Meaning, villainous Joseph or redeemable Joseph, people still enjoy Dream Daddy. Second, the response to this type of response is akin to the Draco Malfoy scenario, wherein JK Rowling expressed concern over her fans' love of Draco, also citing his narrative purpose and blaming his popularity on his actor's attractiveness, even though Draco's popularity predated the films. Although it must be acknowledged that Tom Felton's casting did indeed help bolster his popularity. This situation, like the Joseph one, played into one of the main sources of both characters' appeal, which is, there are a lot of gaps left unexplored with them, vis-a-vis -vis character development, motivation, and just overall backstory and plot 
which is something that often leaves fans wanting to know more, particularly with Joseph, given all the factors that are not fully explored. His marriage, his faith, his past affair. Many felt there was a lot there that could be fascinating to dive into. So to be told he's a sociopath felt to many like a write-off, an unfair dismissal narratively. And as he was already such a polarizing character within the fandom, it made some feel even more protective of him, which ended up ultimately creating more fanworks for him. However, it must be noted that this type of creator response is unsurprising, as when one designs a narrative with a goal in mind, with all elements working towards that goal, it is easy to get locked into one viewpoint and be taken aback when people come out with one that is different, or, in certain creators' views, even antithetical. Thirdly, most people didn't end up disliking Mary, not even from the start, or if they did, it was very quickly rectified, both often occurring without the desired introspection that the creators anticipated. So the idea that she would be bashed because she was an obstacle and as an example of female character bashing for the most part didn't pan out. While there were those who did play into the developers' expectations, within the fandom in certain corners she became quite celebrated, and so that reaction in a way overshadowed the predicted one. As a result, she now has her own place within the fandom. All of this goes to explain why there are so many fics dealing with your dad Sona and Joseph, for people feel there are unexplored avenues, and it isn't even necessarily about redeeming Joseph, but just about adding more to the very intriguing framework laid out. Which leads directly into our next popular pairing, that being between the dad Sona and Damien Bloodmarch. This vampire-inspired dad has a strong following all his own, and many fans feel boasts the most wholesome arc, and his old-fashioned style of romance left many fans swooning and wanting to keep these two's tale going. With his character as well, there are also things to expand upon. Many want to expand upon and explore Damien's experiences as a trans man, as the game, while inclusive, does acknowledge this, but does not dwell on this detail, a decision both praised and critiqued. Some loved that it was mentioned, but not dwelt upon, as they felt it showed respect for the topic, and acknowledged it was too big for a dating sim included in the meme category of sites that host it to tackle, and also felt that it aided in normalization and provided a safe, fun experience for gamers, while others felt it should have been addressed more, and that if the developers were going to take time to address other issues, why not this one? And that while it may not be an issue in the game, it still is one in real life at the time of this recording, and so deserved to be placed more front and center. Mileage on this varies, but for those who felt the game was either lacking, or appreciated the representation, or just Damien in general, fandom became a space to address that love, or frustration. Of course, your dad Sona is shipped with other dads too, but a bit less so, and there are a few lamenting the inability to date all the dads at once in the ultimate polydatimous relationship so they content themselves with shipping Dad Sona X all. Now while there is much love out there for the Dad Sona, not everyone took to their created character, and instead were more drawn to the other characters, and were more interested in exploring relationships between them. So who are the popular pairings of the in-game characters? Well the most popular, or at least most intriguing in-game pairing to most fans, is that between Dream Daddies Robert and Joseph who are revealed to have a history together within the game, a prior affair that ended with hurt feelings and unresolved tensions. This of course left shippers wondering what happened, and could they fix it? And with the discovery of the cult ending, and how much that played into Robert's plot and unaddressed game points, such as his tattoo, canon or not, a whole other avenue is open for shippers to explore. While not for everyone due to a variety of reasons, chief amongst them the unhealthy factor and how manipulative one feels Joseph is or isn't, this pairing still maintains a decent level of interest for both old and new fans. Fans also explore Joseph's relationship with Mary, both in terms of dealing with their marriage issues and just exploring them as a couple, even if their relationship is crumbling, although some do find a way to reconcile them. As mentioned, people feel there is much left over in terms of these characters. Mary and Robert also have a fair bit of fan support, both platonically and as a ship, with a small amount rooting for an OT3. Robert also finds himself paired with Damien, with visions of midnight cemetery romps and endless movie nights dancing in shippers' heads. And perhaps Robert could prove to be a calming influence on Lucian, perhaps get him out of that oregano game. From there, we get even rarer still, with the pairing of Damien and Hugo. For those who made it to the third date with Matt, they may have noticed these two hanging out together at the coffee spoon. This moment, for some, was enough to pique their interest, 
especially as some consider these two to be the nicest dads in the game, and some are quick to note the similarities in their arcs when it comes to hiding parts of themselves and coming to accept that they are valid and so are their interests. There are, of course, many variations on these themes, but these tend to be the ships that come up the most. But it must be said, they are all interesting and all have material to work with. There are also ships amongst the younger cast too, such as Lucian and Ernest, or Lucian and Amanda. Now, of course, swirling around all the various ships is the oft maligned attractive factor, or the shallow factor. People shipping for characters they deem physically appealing. Even if this is the case or the start of it for some shippers, it does not mean that a work cannot be deep, well thought out, or intriguing. And some would argue that if it is not, so what? And that it does not mean it comes from a place of maliciousness, and that there is room for more shallow exploration as well. For contrary to popular belief, that is not all fandom, but just a part. So there is plenty of variety for everyone, although some will always look down upon those for whom this is the driving or originating force, as they do not see harmless fun or an outlet or various forms of self-expression, but instead ignorance or fetishization. And for some, this plays into their perceptions of fandom as a whole, though that is a discussion for another day. All in all, it is a comparatively small in terms of certain juggernaut fandoms, but still passionate, diverse fandom, with a whole lot of fan work going on, that while perhaps not as dense as it once was, is still produced. And who knows what the future holds? And even if it remains at its current rate, or a bit less, it will be remembered by most as a fun fandom experience. So, with all of that said, what has been your Dream Daddy experience? Have you played the game? If so, did you like it? What has your fandom experience been like? Do you have any ships? And of course, who was your daddy of choice? Let me know all of this down below. Remember it if you can, you know I love a good paragraph comment. We're gonna do another one of these vids, but it's gonna be more candid and chit chatty where we're just gonna talk about what I thought of the game because you guys had a lot of questions during the stream. So I thought that would be a good opportunity to answer them. And of course, if you have any last minute ones, you can add them down below. I also wanna shout out some really cool fan art and fix and a couple of other things that occurred during the stream. So if you're interested, please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it talking about shipping with me. I always appreciate it. There are, as always, more videos coming soon. So, until next time, let's get to that outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side, and to everyone who tuned in for all of these streams. It was quite a journey. As always, please stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.